everybody. How y'all doing? This is Carla Widenix with today's inspiration. And as always, I want to encourage you and remind you that you can walk every day on purpose. Yes, you can. You know, um, I was reminded of a song that I love by one of my favorite singers of all time, which is Yolanda Adams. My um my sister in law reminded me of the song. Uh she was just commenting on a, on another song and she said that um uh well it was Yolanda Adams of course and she was saying that she loves the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. And I said, Me too, absolutely. And you know, uh, in, in 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 church today, uh, my pastor was preaching and he and he talked well he didn't talk about the song. But he talked about the fact and encourage, encouraging us to hold on because the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. And I want to spread that message to someone else today. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord. That's not just a song. That's not just a saying. That is scriptural. Um, where it's stated that this battle that, for this battle that you fight is not yours. It's God's. And you might be going through right now. You might be going through a battle. And it doesn't matter how great the battle is. The Bible did not promise. God's word does not promise. God did not promise that we would not get into battle. That we would not fight. In fact, um, through Paul, he gave us, he gave us the um, preparation for battle. The headpiece. The, the sword, the breastplate, how we should guard our feet. He used a soldier to describe what the Christian show, soldier should wear. And that tells me that there's going to be battle. That we're going to have to protect ourselves. We're going to have to guard ourselves. We're going to have to get behind our leader to protect us while we're going into battle. There will be battle. There is a spiritual warfare going on. There's a fight for you. There's a fight to take you down. Satan is our arch enemy. He is our enemy, our biggest enemy. And he is trying to tear you down. You might be fighting and battles comes in different ways, through different areas, with different tactics. But it's a battle nonetheless. What might be an overwhelming battle to you might not be anything for me. But it's personal. It's personal. So whatever battle you're going through, what are you fighting for? Finances. You may be under, you may be just, just you know, don't know what you're going to do. You may, it, it could be anything, but it's a battle. It may be a, a battle with your family, with your relationships, uh, on your job. Lord knows I know how that is. A battle, a battle with your siblings, a battle with your spouse, a battle with your children, a battle, your car might be acting up, a battle with uh, just, I mean, you know what you're going through. You know what you're battling against. You may be battling against depression, anxiety. Personally, I suffer from anxiety mentally. And it's a battle because I have to fight against it. I have to fight hard. Uh, I know what depression is. is. I've been through it. And I've seen it in others. I've seen it in loved ones. I've seen it. It's a battle. It's a fight. But this battle is not mine. This battle is not yours. It's God's. So God has taken the heat. God is it's almost like um, okay, I remember well, I have I have an older brother, Michael. I remember when we were younger, we were little, uh, there were some children that used to mess with us that lived in our neighborhood. We call them the little redhead children. They have red hair. Uh, uh, 
they would mess with us. And I would, I, I, again, I'm, I'm his younger sis, his young, his only sister, but younger. And I was always quiet and meek and scared and, and just petrified. But Michael was always bold and, you know, nobody going to mess with him. And, you know, I don't know what he felt inside, but um, that was what he gave out. And I know that even though we used to, you know, we used to argue in the house, we used to, you know, siblings, bickering. We would do that, but don't mess with his sister. Don't mess with it with our younger brother. Don't mess with his siblings at all because Michael would take care of it. And so I, I used to know that when we go outside, walk to school, although I was scared inside of those children, I didn't have to be scared because my big brother, Michael, was walking me to school. Michael was with me. Michael was going to take care of whatever needed to be take care, taken care of. Michael was going to fight my battle. And that's how it is with God. And I use that because I can relate. That's how I can relate. I know how Michael had my back and he still had my back. I'm 60 years old now. He still got my back. I know that. But who got Michael back? God. It's his battle. God is bigger than all of that. God is taking care of all of that. God will fight for you. God will, he will, he will make a part in the Red Sea. Okay? The children of Israel were breaking out of Egypt. He was sending them out of Egypt. But now they had this big, the big Red Sea to cross. How are they going to get across that sea? There were no boats. They, I mean, how are they going to get across there? God already, already sent his command, let my people go. So if he said, let, let them go, obviously he was going to make a way for them. But to the human eye and the human cons consumption, there was no understanding how we're going to get across this Red Sea. How are we going to get across it? He parted the Red Sea. He made a highway, as they say. He made a highway through that, through that water for them to get across, for them to walk on dry land across to the other side. Thousands of people. He brought them through, over, across, through the Red Sea. And then guess what? Just in the nick of time, just in the right time, just in the due time, he closed the sea and it drowned Pharaoh and his army. But he got the people across like he said he would. When he said, let them go, it wasn't like, it wasn't like I, I want him to let them go, but I don't know how they're going to get over there. No, there was never no doubt. The plan was all already there. Same with you. God wants you to trust him. Although you may not see your way out, you may not see how it's going to happen. That's one of my problems. I like things. I like structure. I like to know. <laughs> but this is something I'm working on. And I and I thank God that I have gotten better. And I, I, I'm, I'm more trusting now. I'm more trusting. And the more trusting I become, the harder the things are that I have to trust them for. You know, Satan is not going to make it easy for you. He's not going to just step back and say, okay, oh well. But, you know, he will because he has to flee. He has to flee. But he's going to come back and going to come back and going to come back. And every time he, he comes back, you, you have to utilize that faith that you have that, that was built. All of those problems that you've gone through in the past, they built you for right now. For what you're going through right now. What he did back then, he'll do it again. He blessed you with some small things. He's going to bless you with all things. He's going to make the way. So just know when you're going through these battles, just look up in your heart. And say, God, I, I give it to you. I'm stepping back, Lord. It's for you. I know it's your battle. I know you are going to bless me through this. You know why? And you know what you are? You are more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. He's going to bring you through. He's going to defeat the enemy. And what makes you more than a conqueror is that you didn't do it. He did it. So you're more than even just conquering. You, you're more than even just, you know, getting through. You're more than an overcomer. 
You are more than an achiever, than an achiever. You are more than a conqueror because that this battle is his. It's not yours. He's going to bring you through. How blessed are you? Just think about it. What he's doing and has done and will do for you. But you got to trust him. You got to believe in him. You have to believe him. You have to have faith. And you have to use your faith because, yes, as the Bible says, we all have a measure of faith. We all have, we the faith is there. But if you don't use it, it's just, it's, 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 in, it's in, inactivated. But you must activate your faith. It's there. You have it. Everybody has a measure of faith. And all you need is a faith of the size of a mustard seed. I should, I should have brought that here in front of me. But we have some mustard seeds. And they are nano small. Very small. The size of a mustard seed, which means even a little faith activated in use, utilized, is enough to move God. Enough to move God. What did Jesus say to the disciples when they were on the boat? when it was rocking and waving and they were in the storm and they asked the master, don't you care that we're going to die? Jesus was down in the, bo in the bottom, below deck, sleep, resting. Don't you care? But see, that was their faith saying, don't you care that, that, that we die? Because they knew that he could change things. That was a measure of faith. However, it wasn't properly utilized because they allowed their fears to overtake them. And what did he say? He calmed the winds and the rain. He calmed it. Peace be still, he said. But he said to them, O ye of little faith. Yes, it only takes a little faith. But just think if you fully utilize it. Just think. You wouldn't be going through all the headache and the stress and the sweating and the panic attacks. You wouldn't be going through that because your faith would just be in him. I remember one time I was going through a very low time, very dark time in my life. A whole bunch of a whole bunch of um, roadblocks in front of me. And somebody had said, they knew the situation. And they said, I don't know why, how are you so calm? You know, they they thought they thought I didn't have faith. They 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 were just worried about me. But the thing is, there was nothing I could do with what was going on with the situation. And I just put it in God's hands. I didn't know how he was going to turn it around. I didn't know how he was going to change it. But I knew he was going to do something. That was my faith. I didn't have to be uh, panicking and in, in an uproar. I didn't have to be, oh, oh. You know, I, I didn't have to be like that because I knew he was going to work it out. I knew, and I know now, no matter what we face, God is there. God is where you're going. He's already there. He's already made the way. Um, at one point, after preaching with the multitudes, Jesus and his disciples, um, they were to get in the boat to go to the other side. And Jesus said, let us go to the other side. Now, this is how I take that. When Jesus says, let us go to the other side, that means you're going to get to the other side. That's not like, he's not saying, let's go to the other side only if there's no problems on the way. Only if this boat don't break down. Only if the winds don't come up. Only if, if nothing happens. He didn't say that. He didn't say that nothing would happen on the way. But he said, let us go to the other side. That means we're going to get to the other side. We may have to fight and scramble and <laughs> rock and roll to get there, but we're going to get there. Let's go to the other side. Jesus said, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. This world is still in existence. We are still living. You are still living. He's with you. He will never, ever leave you. So rest in assurance that the battle is not yours. There's a song that says that the fight is, is fixed. 
is already fixed in your favor. This battle is fixed in your favor for you to win, for you to come out as the victor. You will be victorious because you are more than a conqueror and he is fighting your battle. In fact, in his mind, it's already done. It's already done. So hold on, my sister. Hold on, my brother. God is fighting your battle. And you can rest assured in that fact. Okay? God bless you all. Have a great day. This is Carla Y. Nix with today's inspiration.